everyone. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. If you have not already, please make sure you hit that like button and then subscribe to my channel. The support that you guys give is very much appreciated. I'm always trying to grow my channel and every like, comment, and subscriber really does make a difference. So thank you guys for doing that. I also, really quick, I want to apologize. I am not one of those kind of high tech fancy YouTubers with the special light glow rings and microphone booms that cut out background noise. So I'm sorry, the audio and quality of this video are probably not as great as some of the other YouTube videos you've seen out there, but I'm working with what I have and I'm still a pretty uh, small channel. So this is what I have to work with. Um, honestly, right now I have my phone taped to a window because that's the best lighting I have in this apartment. There's pretty much one window. So this is, this is what I have for you guys. So first of all, you'll probably notice this is not normally what my videos look like. Um, usually outdoors, hiking, climbing, doing whatever it is, and not usually inside taking a video quite like this. I'm sure you remember on my very last video, the Tetons part three, the video ended rather abruptly. We are struggling. So this is my best attempt to try to explain what happened from that point on. Um, the furthest thing from my mind in that moment was recording because we hit what it essentially would be described as survival mode. We did try to record this once before with Natalia and Shannon both here. Shannon, Natalia. We could kind of talk as a group about what happened, how we were feeling, and um, kind of debrief together. The audio turned out to be a disaster. It picked up pretty much every noise you can imagine, except for our voices. Depending on what app you're using, more than our <laughs> And to sit down and ask us to try to communicate our things. Um, yeah, the car. Um, and then I drew and uh, <laughs> we spent a while trying to find a time that we could all get together and re-record this. And that proved to be very difficult. So I just decided to make it work with myself and I'm gonna do my best to overlay some of their answers and their description of what happened in here if the audio will allow. Um, so yeah, again, thank you guys for taking the time to watch. I'm going to explain to you guys exactly what happened from the moment you guys saw at the end of T-Towns 3 until the moment uh, Natalia and I got all the way off of the trail to the car to meet Shannon. So, here's what happened. <laughs> Natalia and I were hiking, we were on about 18 and a half miles, and you all know we were both injured and I mean, eight miles was pushing it for us, we realized after the first two days. And so for that day, for us to go over 18 miles and we were gonna be going over 20 total, uh, was very difficult for us. Our injuries were to the point where every step mattered. Every step in the wrong direction was physical and mental anguish. And so we were doing our best to make smart decisions with the resources we had. We both had about two to five percent of battery on our phones. It was raining pretty hard at one point where even bringing your phone out was a little bit risky, let alone trying to conserve battery power. One headlamp when yeah, the other one, one white. <laughs> the battery was going on that. The map that we had originally downloaded was for our exit that was planned, but since we decided to go out on a different trail to leave early, we did not have that section downloaded. So if you tried to zoom in at all, you could not see what was going on on the trail. Because of that, when we got near the end, when we were in the last one to two miles, the trail was difficult because of how many areas it broke off in. And it was one of those trails where trails would break off and then reconnect here, but then this one was doing the same thing over here. So you thought, okay, as long as I'm moving in this direction, I'm good, but little did you know that it might break off and then come around this way. And like I said, because we were injured, every step mattered. Every step made the difference between us making it to the end or not. The injuries that we had, we needed to be making progress. And that was adding an urgency and anxiety that we don't normally have. Now like trying to go back to it, every step counted, mm -hmm. every step mattered. And that was a pretty overwhelming feeling that I hadn't experienced in a long time. The thing that made this probably the most difficult was, again, you guys only saw a brief moment when the three of us were making a decision about what to do. It seemed more of like my decision and you guys didn't feel like you were a part of it. And I feel shit about that. I feel like I definitely wasn't very vocal during that interaction. I think I was just focusing on like my own struggles. So I definitely like, did not intervene and I did not share. I just didn't share my opinion. I think it doesn't lie specifically on you or anyone. It was just... It poses a different challenge to have to put someone else's wants, needs, mm -hmm. thoughts, 
sometimes ahead of you, but at least alongside of your own um, when making decisions about what to do and difficult and something I think I was able to practice and get better at and learn ways that I was not good at it. The decision we ended up making was that because Shannon was not injured and we had to get to our car, which was way at the beginning where we first started hiking 40 miles earlier, Shannon was going to hike ahead at a normal pace because she was not injured. I don't even remember a lot because I'm just like, Got to get to the car. And she went to go get the car so that she could meet us at the end by the time we would finish the trail. I just wanted to get to the car so that I could come pick these guys up and for them to not have to like worry about um, hitchhiking and whatever. Which in theory seems like a pretty good idea. The issue was that we did not have service being on this trail. I don't even remember how long it was from when you last contacted me to when you got to the car. And so although Natalia and I both reached a point where for our bodies, it made sense to stop and set up camp in the dark and hike out the next day. We did not have service to be able to communicate that to Shannon. There were moments where we thought like she would just sit here and like build a tent and just stay here. We did want to set up at times. And I think again, if one thing had been different, we would have handled it differently. If Shannon had not been at the end for us, we probably would have set up camp miles earlier, but mm -hmm. without service to tell her that's what we were going to do, all she would have thought is we're lost, we're not making it. She would have been waiting for us all night long, driving around, searching for us, getting on the trail, trying to find us. I was trying to text you guys and it wasn't going through. Um, and yeah, it started getting dark. And I, was, <laughs> I drove around everywhere because I thought maybe you guys were like on the road, didn't have service, your phone's dead. And I was like, I'm just gonna drive around and see if I see them. And then mm -hmm. I'm just gonna, gonna go to the campsite and I'm gonna go to the trailhead and just like, yeah, I got really anxious. So she would have been in a position where she made it to the end of the trail, had no idea where we were, probably would have started to worry, you know, when it hit midnight, 2 a.m., 4 a.m., she probably would have been coming back and searching for us. Yeah, I was really nervous that, I don't know, something terrible had happened. And at that point, I was like pretty close to being like, I need to go out there and find them. And that would have created issues, again, because we had no idea where exactly we were on the trail. So. It, <laughs> uh, it kind of felt like the perfect storm of everything that could have caused an issue did. So we would try to kind of zoom in on the map, struggled with that, did the best we could. Um, at one point we ended up on this little peninsula which posed its own issue because we would make it to the coast of this lake and we knew okay that the lake needs to be on the left side of us as long as we go back this way we'll make it and since we didn't know we were on a peninsula because we couldn't zoom in that far on the map we would start to go that way and hit water and we thought okay it's you know it's still on the left of us we must have been wrong we would come back and it was like this little circle that we did were we on 30 minutes? at least 30 minutes on that peninsula the only place we didn't need to go and that's where we went mm -hmm. <laughs> in the absolute pitch black in this rain that um it made it hard for us to hear each other when we were right next to each other because the rain was so heavy. Another piece that kind of added to the mental strain of this hike um, was that we would occasionally, especially in the last mile to two, hit this sign. We could see the back of it and we thought, great, that must either be pointing us in the direction, that must tell us what trail we're on, that must tell us where the end is, one of those things. And then we would approach the sign and it would just be a great reminder for us that there are bears in the area that want to eat us and we need to be careful. Um, <laughs> so that wasn't ideal. Um, it made it so that we wanted to continue to make noise because that's always one of the better things. You don't want to startle a bear. So we were trying to make noise, but neither of us were in a mental state to want to continue to do that. We kind of made this deal and I was like, okay, the first thing is tell me a funny story. Yeah. And both of us would be like, uh. And like maybe after 20 minutes of the game, we realized in the game, it was like, I no longer want to play this game. This is yeah. no longer fun. <laughs> we both were at a point where we just wanted to shut down. Um, it made it very difficult. But after <laughs> what felt like forever, I mean, we started hiking at around 7 a.m. that day. We finished at around 11 p.m., I think. I wish the two ladies were here so they could help me remember exactly what time. Almost 11 p.m. that we're finishing the hike. We've been hiking all day, 20 miles, no rest, no food. Just like the mental strength at that point that it requires. There was a peak of like how we were feeling, like the peak of our emotions, the tension, the 
the strong feelings of like for me at least it was like i was in so much physical pain i was redirecting that anger in different places that were not the most act uh, like beneficial but once we felt like we are about to make it like we are getting there as soon as we got to the vehicle with shannon it hit us that we'd arrived we were going to be able to get off of our injuries and um we did in fact make it because there were moments where we we weren't sure we weren't sure. We didn't know if we were going to find it or if we were gonna walk in circles for the next five hours. So when we finally saw the car, we finally saw Shannon was there, um, we both just broke down. It kind of felt like we were holding it in, trying to just make it through. And the second you realize you've made it, it um, just kind of came out. We turned around and that was like a pretty special moment for me. of just like, we saw each other, we took a deep breath and we just started crying. I was like, <laughs> I need to cry right now. Yeah. And we just started crying, like hugging each other. And Cried for a little while, finally got in the car and we just sat in the car for probably five minutes before Shannon even asked like, hey, where, do, where should we drive? Are we, are we leaving? Um, because we were both in a point where we just needed to decompress and process exactly what just happened. And it was just like peeking her head out. <laughs> I was like, oh sh <laughs> they're bad. Probably one of the hardest parts of the whole situation was how much was out of our control, honestly. Like most of it was out of our control though. Like that, that trail, knowing that that was that a true. trail that like would be not smart to go on, like yeah, that's, yeah. that wasn't- yeah. You don't know what you don't know. It's a little bit hard looking back because I mean, in retrospect, everything is so much more clear. If we'd had the map downloaded, we probably would not have spent as much time walking in the wrong direction. We had no idea that the trail was going to start intersecting with itself and become really confusing. If we had had service, if we could have communicated with Shannon, we would have made a different decision. If the weather had not been coming in, we had not been injured, it would have changed the way we handled it. it. The weather ended up being as bad as we thought it would be, so in some ways it's good that we got off, but if I think if either of us had realized what that was going to do to our injuries, we both would have decided to handle the weather rather than um, prioritize getting off the trail. The next two days, I couldn't even put pressure on my foot. It kind of felt like I did after I got off of, where was I? I think it was in the Wind River Range um, when my first injury with my foot kind of started. Um, and Natalia had equal struggles with her ankle for a little while afterward. There were so many factors that were out of our control. And then the ones that were within our control, we did the best we could to choose what was going to be best for all three of us. Anytime you have more than one person, it's gonna be difficult to decide something that works for everyone. And so we did the best we could to meet everyone's needs and do what was best for the group and for our own safety. I'm glad I was able to test out how my injury was doing. Um, and I learned a lot. I know, you know, Natalia said the same thing. We both learned a lot about ourselves in that moment and how we handle situations under stress and we learned i know i don't want to speak for her i wish it was here i'll see if part of that audio will work all i can do is speak for myself and i have slowly been working more and more on figuring out how to hike and adventure with injuries and this one was just a eye-opening experience for myself to realize the ways I can prioritize my health and my own safety and pushing for what I need, um, even if it's the unpopular opinion. And I think Natalia had said the same thing for her as she wished she had spoken up a bit more about the decision that we made. There was um, a time where I knew that my, my injuries were a little bit bigger than I wanted to express. Having injuries in the outdoors for me with a big history of it, is very humbling in many ways, but it's also very frustrating. I should have advocated for those things more and my pride was just so big and like, I didn't want to seem weak. I didn't want to stop pushing. I wanted to be resilient. I wanted to be tough. And I was all of that, but I could have also been the same way, the same characteristics, even while vocalizing my injuries. Learning how to listen to my body and take care of it and advocate for my body because I'm the only one that can. Communication, I think, would have, I would have mm -hmm. tried to enhance <laughs> yeah. um, for, all and, of us. for all of us. And keep in mind, like as we're talking about the weather being bad and worrying about hiking in it and everything, all three of us guided for the same company. All of us have guided through the winter, through negative degree days where we're outside for eight days straight um, without a chance to go inside. And so it's not that we're unaccustomed to that or unable to handle it. It was just 
a very unique situation. There's a type one, type two, right, type of fun. And this was definitely a type two fun for me and that moment oh, was not enjoyable. Four. If there was like a type three, <laughs> I would be there. Like now, looking back, I really appreciate type two fun for me because it makes you closer to the people that you go through those experiences with. Even though it was challenging, experiences like that make you closer and make you see uh, another part of people when they're in so much pain. But now it's like, I have more gratitude and more awareness of like, the resiliency that these two ladies beside me have and just like, I'm grateful for that experience. I'm sure, you know, you looking in, you watching this video of what we did and, you know, analyzing the decisions we made, it's possible you may have come to a different conclusion. But with that in mind, I do hope that if you have questions or thoughts about the decisions we made, please, please feel free to comment below. I'd love to get back to you and let you know a bit more about why we chose to do what we did, what our thoughts were, if you have specific questions about why we chose to do this one thing and I can hopefully I can let Natalia and Shannon know that those comments will be going on in this video and maybe they can jump in and reply for themselves so yeah that is it um I'm not gonna have a little coming up next video on this one um but just so you guys do know what's coming up next uh Maddie and I went to Goldbug Hot Springs in Idaho and I created probably one of my favorite videos so far so uh, actually, the next two videos that I've created are probably two of my favorite ones. So make sure, like I said, if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those. And uh, yeah, thank you guys all for taking the time to watch my video. And I will see you next time. Would you guys go back on this? Hell yeah! yeah. I want to do that last paintbrush. Oh,